about there is provision of 1.75 lakh crores for agriculture. Then afforestation and the plantation forest, plantation forest management, soil and water conservation, forest and wildlife protection and the management under COMPA, that is the compensatory afforestation management and planning advisory. And uh, there is good scope for this sector also under this Atma Nirbhar Bharat Avhyan. And uh, in this package, the fishermen and the animal husbandry farmers are also included in PM Kishan earlier that is the fishermen and the animal husbandry farmers was not included and in the recent what is the package it was included and that there was a provision of about additional 30000 crores for small and marginal farmers to navart in addition to earlier 90000 crores to meet the current current requirement so in our opinion actually the package it is the boon particularly for the Nordician region, the marginal farmers, poor farmers, then MSMEs, no, no, and uh, no, since no. the Honorable Prime Minister uh -huh. is very much focused for the Nordician region under his policy. So his vision oh. is the second green revolution or evergreen revolution, it should be initiated okay. from the Nordician Beginning region. Or end. So that is why the time has come to okay. have to work in convergence mode all the researchers, after, scientists, after speak, assistant functionaries, then all the policy makers, yeah. then the farmers, the NGOs. So that actually the dream of the Honorable okay. Prime Minister of India should be done. Okay, thank you. How we can achieve the income of the double, that is that how we can make that is doubling of the income of the farmers in 2022. So without taking much time, I behalf on behalf of the organizing committee cordially invite our Honorable MP, Dr. R. K. Ranjan for his kind and valuable speech. Thank you very much, Dr. Vice-Chancellor, Central Agriculture University. Uh, first of all, I pay my respect to Dr. S. A. Ayapa, Chancellor of the Central Agriculture University. And all the distinguished panelists and agri scientists and students. Initiatives uh, taken up by our Honorable Prime Minister is very essential and very much uh, they have to uh, follow what kind of uh, the messages given by our Honorable Prime Minister to implement at different levels. As, you, as we all aware that agriculture is a subject, uh, step subject. However, the agricultural policy is uh, Major, uh, basically uh, framed by the central government with the uh, uh, through the planning currently NITI IO. And so uh, there are different zones, zone, agricultural, uh, agroclimatic zone all over the country. And even in our Northern <coughs> state, there is a huge number of micro agroclimatic zones because of the different topographical landscape and so we have a lot of things and in the mid times we have about 250 more than 250 ethnic communities uh, throughout the northeastern india 
and all they have their indigenous knowledge system and the system of agricultural practices is uh, quite uh, the diversified. <laughs> so, and also we have a large number of native crops varieties. Even in the rice, perhaps I was told by our agri scientists that even in Manipur, we have more than 200 rice cultivars. So in the midst of the climate change and also in the midst of the, uh, the increase of populations and also correspondingly decreasing of the land resources for agricultural practices, we are bound to apply the high yielding varieties and modern, modern technology uh, inputs for more sufficient or optimal production of rice. Under such circumstances, on the other hand, we have certainly uh, kind of uh, the anxieties to conserve our native uh, the species in the region. So, uh, and also currently because of the COVID, there are many hindrances or obstacles in the practice of uh, the agricultural practice. So knowing all these situations, our honorable prime minister from time to time, uh, he instructed to all the cabinet because agricultural planning is not only confined to the agricultural departments. It needs to correlate to the different sectors of the government department. As for example, uh, particularly in Manipur, we are giving trust to the, to the cultivation of rice only. And now the importance of uh, the cut ravi crops is also increasing. Vegetables and other kind of horticultural crops are uh, more essential nowadays. So all these, when we are planning with the agriculture, with this situation, the current situation, we need the collaborative effort of the horticulture and also uh, the, uh, the, for the transportation and movement of the uh, agricultural and allied materials we need, even the railway and uh, even the production is generated, even it needs to marketize all those products. So for this also we need industry and commerce groups of the department should also be involved under such circumstances. So I honestly and uh, uh, humbly appeal to all the agri scientists kindly put their serious thought while conserving the native and also while producing this uh, the requirement of our people's productions food productions as well as the associate uh, productions we need. so kindly give your fruitful thought and link with the peasant community of the uh, nation, particularly in Manipur, our geographical landscape is uh, more than 90% is dominated by the uh, rugged hill slopes and mountain ranges, and where predominantly the shipping cultivation is practiced, and with all the traditional system of agriculture. So can we think about uh, another or alternative systems of high value and low volume production so that the economic benefit to the hill people should also be encouraged. So for example, the, uh, currently what happened, to be very frank, in most of the hill areas, uh, earlier it was dominated by the shifting cultivation. But now because of the needs of the money, what they are doing, there are many uh, undesirable cultivations are coming up as for example, uh, the poppy plantations or some kind of uh, the anti-narcotic uh, type of plants are cultivated for getting quick and easy money. So how to control this kind of uh, new intervention of a new kind of uh, the undesirable cultivation system? Can we think some different kind of crops? For example, in the Golden Triangle area, earlier it was uh, dominated by the poppy plantation. Then ultimately they tried to shift towards the kitchen gardening or vegetable garden like cabbage and others. But that too, it doesn't give the quick money. Or they cannot transform the product into gas. So they now the some of the uh, United Nations missions, they introduce cultivation of blueberry. Uh, it's a high value in energetic and 
Um, so if we could introduce this kind of uh, the crops in the hill areas, then it will be more benefited. So such kind of uh, things has to be looked into. And specifically in Manipur, perhaps I already mentioned our landscape is very uh, uh, variated from place to place. And the Southern Valley site is dominated by the wetland uh, complex. So most of our peoples are depend on right from the early days our protein sources is derived from the fish. And of course, nowadays, uh, poultry and animal feeds has already <clears throat> entered to this arena. Uh, our present union finance minister has already announced about the blue economy. At that time, we discussed with her and also placed in the Lok Sabha to think about the inland fishery, particularly state like Manipur. We have wetlands, we have rivers, we have our native fish species. Why not we have a typical kind of inland fishery should also be support uh, under these new strategic programs. Uh, with this few words, I again, uh, thanks to all the agricultural scientists and also to the students and researchers of the agriculture. Please do help the four vision, ignorant visions to, to, to make capacity to produce more crop as we are given by our Prime Minister. Prime Minister has already announced many schemes for the future. Even the scheme is trying to cover uh, the fishing, fishing community also. But there is another critical issue in Manipur. Uh, of course, this is involved with land reforms. As early as 1960, our land survey was started. At that time, many rural uh, peoples, they occupied a huge areas of land before the land survey and before the MLR LRX 1960. So when the survey start, the premium has to be deposited to the government. The poor person cannot afford. So they rushed to some of the town businessmen and money lenders and said that you please pay on behalf of us this premium, keep the pata under your name. We are just like a tenant to practice the agriculture with share cropping. So now Prime Minister sensitively announced about the crop insurance, Pisan Vikas, or any other insurance given to the peasants. When the, the, these facilities are supposed to uh, entitled to them, then some document is always asking where is your pata? In the pata, your name is there in the land document. They cannot have, uh, produce that things. So if there be any kind of land reform, we can switch to the real agriculturist people, then it will be helpful to us. Please kindly think on this line also. Similarly, uh, Kisan credit card, of course it is a loan. The agriculture uh, cultivating peoples, they have to show certain areas of lot. Some acres of land is required. But in the fishing community, particularly in Manipur, particularly in the Loktak land, they have no land. And they are all uh, depend on Loktak without any uh, the earmark for this X, Y, Z, uh, the fishermen. So community on community land, they have to practice their fishing technology. So under such circumstances, the Kisan, uh, because uh, what you call the Kisan credit card, okay. uh, we cannot apply to the fishing community of our states. Yeah. So is there be any biomedia which can switch to them to, practice, uh, to enjoy this facility? Kindly think on this, and I hope uh, uh, all the experts of the agriculture throughout the nations, they may give a systematic input so that all of our peoples will be benefited. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And I request Mr. Tapas Paul. Assist Karenge. Assist. Uh, there is the president of the there is uh, all India. Agriculture Students Association to give the to propose the board of things. 
thank you very much sir uh, for giving a very um, nice and uh, informative suggestion to the association as well as uh, to the university uh, for uh, uh, for making the strategic strategic planning uh, to keep the all point uh, in a view particularly the inland fisheries uh, and inclusion of the diversified sectors and uh, for entrepreneurship by including the in, by including the concept of uh, uh, academia and uh, industry in a loop and also the inclusion of the kisan credit card these all are the very uh, important and the nice uh, solution that will be taken up by the uh, association also in, uh, for uh, further uh, to the government and uh, we are very thankful to you sir that uh, you agree to the uh, to attend this event in a very short period of notice uh, we are very thankful you sir again on behalf of association as well as uh, central agriculture university infal thank you very much sir so now i request our honorable chancellor sir to uh, carry on the session sir sir before uh, this, uh, i want to start uh, i want to speak something about the dr appan sir no 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 thank you thank you uh, no, uh, esteemed esteemed colleagues uh, good afternoon uh, good afternoon everybody at the outset i would like to uh, thank and welcome the honorable member of parliament lok sabha manipur inner dr rk ranjan singh for being with us and for very valuable remarks at the beginning of the valedictory session thank you very much sir i would like to thank the central agriculture university led by the esteemed uh, vice chancellor professor m premjit singh and uh, this event uh, being coordinated by dr ratan saha the director of the extension education to both of you gentlemen and the uh, all india agriculture students association with uh, mr ashish kandelwal excellent you know organization of events for the last two months we have been seeing so to you mr kandelwal thank you and to the central agriculture university for giving me this opportunity and uh, a chance to meet uh, you know very distinguished panel uh, our colleagues and friends this afternoon we have uh, dr k m bujar barwa honorable uh, vice chancellor of uh, the assam agriculture university just now retired uh, we have professor m premjit singh the esteemed vice chancellor of the central agriculture university imphal and uh, dr uh, my friend colleague for many decades now dr uh, dilip kumar former uh, director and vice chancellor of the central institute of fisheries education mumbai honorable uh, member parliament repeatedly talked of inland fisheries dr dilip kumar himself is a inland fisheries specialist dr k k satpati the former director of the uh, uh, fiber institute in calcutta of the icr dr ak tripathi the director of the atari at uh, in assam and dr b c deka the director of the atari in meghalaya and our friend dr r k saha director of the extension education in the central agriculture university who is coordinating this event this is the distinguished panel of uh, panel for this afternoon and uh, we have the program coordinator mr ashish kandelwal as i mentioned of the aisa we also have three reporters Professor E. V. D. Shastri from College of Agriculture, Imphal; Dr. Himadri Saha from College of Fisheries, Tripura; Dr. H. S. M. Haldar from College of Agriculture, uh, Imphal; and uh, the, uh, the audience comprising uh, scientists, uh, academicians, the student friends. To all of you, a warm welcome. Thank you, and uh, <coughs> thanks for joining this uh, meet for last two days. And uh, this time, for last two days, uh, a very well coordinated uh, session. comprising several uh, uh, distinguished speakers uh, from across the country so we would like to hear uh, a, a bit about that also at this time not taking much time i'd love to only mention a few things uh, the honorable mp already has uh, made his remarks uh, for us at this stage we have discussed northeastern agriculture in uh, in depth uh, in, in on earlier occasions we are all very familiar about the food contribution and uh, what should be what should we be doing uh, in in northeast with regard to food production system as uh, was mentioned we we were repeatedly talk, talking of the stresses stress agriculture now one is the abiotic stress another is the biotic stress now we are uh, both of them have come together one is the climate change 
that we already you know we are grappling with and uh, now the covid uh, which again is a biotic stress biotic disaster usually uh, friends as you are all aware the disasters happen on a one as a one off event maybe for two days for one week a cyclone a tsunami all those uh, maybe uh, the other kinds of uh, landslides and so on but in covid is one unprecedented biotic disaster where the world is grappling with it for last 6 months and in india definitely for last 3 months in a very intensive manner now this calls for a long term plan long term plan it it cannot happen overnight now i'd like to also mention to our esteemed uh, panel and the honorable member of parliament only two sectors of economy worked in this situation when everything closed health sector and agriculture never stopped no food production no aspect of food production stopped in this country and that's why we are able to sit today and uh, speak on the webinar today and uh, we have uh, global assessments of the impacts of covid on different sectors of economy the when it comes to agriculture both kpmg and the moody's have said that the impact is of a medium order whereas in industry on industry it was very intense it was of a high order but when it comes to agriculture now they talked of you know all these food segments as i said we have specialists uh, uh, dr professor pujar baru and others they have been speaking now in all the diamond aspects of food uh, production system the impact of covid had been uh, medium now this talks also of the resilience of the sector and the contribution in such a context if if our farmers had said that we can't work we would have we would have we would have gone starving in spite of our food storage now friends i must i'm i'm sure you would agree we we applauded the doctors we we thank the police we thank the nurses but we also at this time should remember we should absolutely salute our farmers farmers across the country who continue to produce food and give us food now uh, with that i would like to mention uh, uh, take two three points now the learnings that we have had in the last three months in the covid era have been very very you know interesting and very uh, very uh, it, it doesn't uh, end with a few things we have we have been having food people have talked of direct to market farmer to direct market how things have changed how middlemen have reduced now these are something that are coming up at the same time now what is happening is there is the processing sector food processing sector there are a lot of questions coming up from uh, processing sector while you are advising social distancing for farmers in the you know village area, rural areas i mean that's fine some of you know you can manage when it when it comes to food processing in a given plant how do we maintain distancing particularly when it requires you know air conditioning cool temperatures and so on how do we you know manage with this kind of uh, you know uh, hygienic conditions in the covid and the post covid era now these are questions our researchers are still struggling with a major problem that was already mentioned is the migration climate change covid stress and the labor migration all of our youngsters who are in the cities maybe it's an opportunity amidst the crisis they have, they have gone back to villages so can we look at it can we can it become an opportunity we have, we always talked of the villages as old ho- old age homes now now that the youngsters have come back in search of livelihoods in search of vocation in terms of income in terms of food money and so on now do we have the platform to tell them yes you can earn 15000 rupees 20000 rupees 30000 rupees per month as you are doing in the cities like in security guards you know you can go on hotel malls and so on they all are looking at immediate opportunities in farming in different ways in the rural areas in different ways so that's where we are looking at two things engaging youngsters maybe skilling them and reskilling them because in a simple milking cow milking i'm sure in our panel will speak about it now they have lost those skills should we reskill them second is immediately they are asking for capital so two things that the migrants are asking in the villages today is one is what is that skill i should have like an electrician a plumber a motorman and so on that i was doing some work in the cities what is the skill that i should have second is where is the money now these two things as was mentioned by the esteemed vice chancellor and honorable member of parliament 
lot of schemes are being have been announced now as technologies can we provide them opportunities technologies researchers students that's what we have been discussing can our arya program attracting retaining youth in agriculture can the farmer first program can the kvk can we go back our our students uh, rave program can we be in adequate numbers in the villages to tell them if, because the next three months kharif season if we hold them back they would re, they would remain in agriculture but if we don't, don't do it they all would go back to city this is the risk that we are running at this stage so this is what we would like to mention here any sector would close but food sector the whole world is looking at it other industries would take time two years three years and so on but food sector is already working we should only give it a elevated uh, platform and good practices what have we learned in this time as good practices so we are looking at are there practical solutions can the fpos be a solution farmer producer organizations can the agri startups become a reality in the new crisis now these are the questions that we would like to uh, raise and i know there are a lot of questions and answers where all of us are in the learning phase people have been asking for ready models pilots so you know they can immediately implant so all that we would be hearing in the afternoon uh, this afternoon session very esteemed uh, distinguished panel is amidst us so what we would like to do is as the title of the seminar says strategies and policies strategy and policies so in terms of strategy uh, after the discussion can we give a strong six points you know whatever six to eight points and policy would be a longer dimension so with these words i if you all kindly agree we once again invite you thank you so much for uh, being with us and uh, if our distinguished panel agrees before we start with uh, professor bajar barua our uh, uh, rapporteur dr edv shastri from college of agriculture impal will give a very quick recap of what happened in the last three sessions yesterday and today uh, with this we will proceed for the next about uh, about uh, 60 to 80 minutes that's the that's the slot we have and uh, now i would request dr shastri to kindly give us a quick recap of what happened in the three sessions dr shastri dr shastri kindly allow my screen sharing okay sir dr ashish yes sir dr shastri please ha ah, sir we allow yeah. you sir let me share my screen so i am um, i am giving the summary and recommendations that emanated from all the three sessions in quick way points that emerged the pros are northeast of india is the most potential region of agriculture production and productivity it has potential to be cradle for next green revolution agriculture is traditionally organic and chemical free in this region the region has the highest explorable biodiversity higher dependency on animals as food the other pros that emerged are horticultural crops are the most uh, potential ones here there are unique unexploited and underexploited vegetable and uh, fruit crops even introduced fruits and vegetables are showing promise and quality in this region bamboo is the most important crop for all purposes orchids are unique flowers of the region many of the crops have very unique properties like higher curcumin content in lagadam variety of turmeric and so on and so forth has high export potential for specialty horticultural products now on the con side we have adoption of modern agriculture practices seems very low rudimentary to low infrastructure have made market accessibility low for the farmers low literacy rates and low entrepreneurship have not encouraged agricultural development heavy subsidies and poor link between farmers and service providers also contributed to lower agricultural production assured irrigation is almost non existence soil health is deteriorating at an alarming rate the other cons are exposure to varied international borders have increased vulnerability to transboundary diseases in all sectors that is agriculture animal and fisheries illegal and ill conceived commercial tree cultivation have also degraded forest lands repatriation of migrant workers to the region stressing the available employment opportunities now what needs to be done 
getting recognition for the products unique to the region, encouragement for setting of nutritional gardens at home streets and on community basis for food security, enactment of policy initiatives which will positively influence agriculture in Northeast region like local for vocal, increasing cropping intensity, the reasons are given there, how it can be done. Then exposure to varied international borders have increased volume, sorry. Yes, Organic farming be encouraged through research and policy support, collection and catalog, cataloging of biodiversity, integrated farming should be promoted. Bees are important pollinators, hence every effort should be done to conserve and propagate beekeeping. Each state has unique fruit, vegetable and spice crop and policy interventions are needed to conserve and improve these, uh, these crops, particularly through culture-based interventions as these are uniquely woven with human culture. Rapid expansion of communication infrastructure and processing facilities for value addition, access to better and quality planting material for all crops be augmented. Research interventions are needed for sustainability and integrated farming approaches using local crops and components. Farmers choice be given in developing local specific research interventions. Macro and sustainable multi-purpose irrigation facilities should be developed to increase cropping intensity. Hello. Strong changes mm. that need to be developed between Northeast biocontrol labs and extension functionaries mm. to make the critical and bio inputs mm. accessible to farmers. ITK interventions oh, need to be promoting organic cultivation. Specific interventions needed to promote edible insects as important protein source. Agro-tourism as an income source should be promoted. Artificial intelligence and agriculture specific electronic devices should be developed. Promotion of nutritional gardens in schools. Uh, should be encouraged. Alternate employment opportunities for juniors to develop. Development of gender specific and terrain specific mm -hmm. agriculture mm -hmm. implements to reduce drudgery is the need of the hour. Creation of recreational forest and forest based sustainable interventions for creation of employment should be explored. Establishment of custom hiring centers with location specific tools, equipment as a means of providing employment to migrant workers be explored. Local fabrication be encouraged under the Make India Initiative. Development of low cost storage facilities like zero energy chambers to prolong the storability be uh, developed. Development of locally variable, available non-conventional feed ingredients from agro and waste for fisheries and animal husbandry, particularly pigree, be encouraged. Strengthening of disease surveillance has to be strengthened. Interstate government consortiums should be established for the disease surveillance. Organization of awareness programs at farm level on biosecurity, surveillance, and monitoring of transboundary diseases in livestock and fisheries is needed. Ornamental fish breeding be encouraged. Skill oriented education from school level be encouraged. And care should be taken into consideration the fisheries farmers' rights in Manipur who do not own land, hence, do not have access to the credit schemes of government. And as our honorable member of parliament, as just said, the scientists should have four vision and intelligent vision in approach to the research and development. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Shastri. Am, am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Tell me, sir. Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Shastri. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so these were the deliberations yesterday and today. Now, uh, what we need to do is a short-term strategy and a long-term policy. That is the intention of the webinar. So if we can move to the distinguished panel at this time, uh, we have a small uh, issue with uh, connectivity with, uh, with regard to Professor Bujar Barua. So we'll start with uh, Professor Dr. Bujar Barua is online? No, sir. He's not. Okay. okay. So if you kindly agree, we'll start with uh, Professor M. Premjit Singh, esteemed Vice Chancellor, of the Central Agriculture University, uh, first panelist. And uh, if you all kindly agree, about eight to 10 minutes, about, about eight to 10 minutes, if we can uh, present our uh, you know, opinions, remarks, we'll be grateful. At this time, Professor Premjit Singh, please. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, our uh, honorable Member of Parliament Lok Sabha, Enar Mariku, Dr. R.K. Ranjanji, 
our chairman, Honorable Chancellor of the Central Division University, our Dr. Ayapanisha, all the panelists, other distinguished delegates. So I'm giving the participants my opinion, remarks, opinion, remarks, remarks on agriculture, agriculture along with plant protection, plant protection, since my specialization is on plant protection. protection. So, so, in yesterday's, in yesterday's discussion, discussion, Dr. Dr. Decker's, Decker's keynote, keynote speakers, speakers, that is, that is opinion, opinion as well as panelists, Dr. Kanukta, stated that the North is supportive of the productive activities, even in rice. But, but our deficit. Dr. Premji Singh, there is a lot of echo. There is a lot of echo. There is one point. And uh, and uh, yesterday's discussion, there was there also was a comment there. Due, to due to the change of the habit and the younger generation, now, now we are the good for our breakfast. So by so considering these, and the there is a good shortage of meat and fodder for animal and fish, we made a comment the following to Polish officials. Number one, there is the rainwater harvesting field and by constructing Zulk through PPP mode, in addition to initiative of the issue delegation of the concerned state government and the use of this efficient use of this harvested water through micro irrigation on custom hiring basis, because all farmers are very poor. That is why it is only through custom hiring basis for cultivation of rubby, vegetables, pulses, and oil seeds. The second opinion, a recommendation will be introduction of wheat in Bhelly and large cultivation of maize with leguminous crops in the hills, because in the hills, the production productivity of the rice is very low. So maize is the crop identified along with other leguminous crops for soil, increasing the soil fertility as well as to solve the shortage of animal and fish feed, as well as for production of biofuel. Because from maize, we can, what to say, get the biofuel. The third recommendation is doubling of cropping intensity with conserved moisture and the adoption of zero tillage cultivation, not only in oil seeds, even the pulses also, with bee pollination, and in places where the rice fellow areas, where there is no provision of irrigation, when there is deficient in the rainfall, and we can do, there is a large scale demonstration, not only oil seeds, even the pulses, lentil, lethyrus. And uh, then in addition to that, now, now the time has come, we have to provide the oil expeller to the farmers on cluster basis, even the dal mill, so that the farmer's income, it can be enhanced. Then the second is the augmentation of seed production programs for quality seed and the planting materials and the accredited nursery seed village concept and the farmer's participatory seed production program may be adopted so that quality seed and the planting materials may be produced locally so that the same may be available to the, in the quantities demanded by the farmers and uh, strengthening of the state government seed farms may also be one of the strategies to increase the seed production. Because here in this context, during the COVID-19 task force, actually, I am also, because I am also in the, what to say, task force, we recommended that actually the food habit of the Nordeastern region, including Manipur, our, is different. We do not accept the rice coming from other places. We prefer only the sticky rice and the semi-glutinous rice. But where is the seed, quality seeds? That is why the farmers, they are using still the paddy, which is which they store. And when they use this, what to say, grain, then productivity will be low. So that is why actually we recommended to the Manipur government, the iShare, the Central Agriculture University, all the Krishi began Kendras, we can produce even 300, 400, what is the quality seeds of the high quality, uh, that is the high yielding varieties, which is sticky rice for next year. So such type of strategy should be there, there so that with farmers, producers, company, we have to do in convergence more. And the number three is I have already explained about the 21 lakh crore Atma Nirbhar Bharat Abhyan, I will not repeat again. And uh, we may recommend for agro-biodiversity, agroforestry, even the agro-tourism, 
medicine and aromatic plants, bamboo plantation, bamboo plantation for Patus even though not only for handicrafts, uh, that is handicrafts, and even for the biofuel production. And this bamboo plantation we can consider as a horticultural crop and the mitun rearing under Patus enclosures, small scale family based horticulture based integrated farming system in the hills. So these are the areas because the idea is actually if we combine this agrotourism, but scenic beauty is there in the whole Northeastern region. And if this agrotourism is combined with these other what to say profitable enterprises, either it may be poultry, piggery or horticulture, then we can attract the youth in agriculture. We can motivate and attract the youth agriculture. And we can also train the migrant workers who are coming back again to the Nordician region, and we can provide job to them instead of job seekers. Our strategy should be, they can, we can make them as job providers or job creators. So organic cultivation with provision of production of organic inputs, collect, collection, processing, certification, and the packaging of high value crops, just like ginger, turmeric, Johar rice, black scented rice of Manipur, there is Saho recently got the GI tech, king chili, pineapple, orange, passion fruit, kiwi, large cardamom, asham limon, kachai limon of Manipur Ukru, from Ukru district, orchids, anthurium. And these are the strength of the Nordician region. And we should put focused for exporting since the Nordician region has border with five neighboring South Asian countries. And we have to give more emphasis on climate resilient agriculture promotion of underutilized vegetables and fruits for solving malnutrition in rural areas, which can be combined with ICDS program. And the next is the promotion of post-harvest technology and value addition at farmer's store on cluster mode of, for retaining the profit to post-harvest technology and value addition. Otherwise, actually the middlemen, the leasemen, they are getting all the benefits. And this for both service and value addition, and this money still going to the middlemen and the listmen, it should be back to the pocket of the farmers if we install the primary processing units in the farmer store on clustered basis. Then the promotion of nutrition garden, it was already discussed in schools, and it should be as in midday meal program under SSA service Abhyan. And it can also be included one of the component in ICDS and homestead gardening also here. And the secondary agriculture, including beekeeping. And because the Nordicean region bees, not only Apicerana, we're also having the stingless bees, which is having, which provide medicinal honey. And even we can think about organic honey because in the Nordicean region, pesticide consumption, particularly in the hot hills is very low. So why not just like Kashmir organic honey, we can produce the organic honey, which can fetch the premium price of about 1,100 per kg in metropolitan cities. And we're having all the four silkworm spaces. And uh, we can use the cashier for triple purpose as oil seed crops for any silkworm rearing, and even as what protein source for the tribal people, then mushroom, including the, our sitake mushroom, then encouraging protective cultivation with specialty vegetable crops and the flowers, high tech horticulture, urban horticulture, even horticulture horticulture, developing of gender sensitive and terrain specific agriculture implements to reduced treasury promotion of model free villages and, and uh, doubling farmers income villages and IPS. The university has already adopted, developed about nearly 25 model villages. And we had already planted more than 1,20,000 fruit plants in different parts of the Manipur, as well as other neighboring countries. Use of artificial intelligence, robots and the drones, IT in agriculture, mobile agro advisory system. It is the need of the hour. Innovative entrepreneurship and agri-tech Startups for unemployed youth and migrant workers coming back to Nordeastern region, integrated pest management for organic agriculture, safer pesticide, nano pesticide, and to control the poor worm and the present problem of the locust. Then we are also having good scope for the, that is the botanicals. And we had already identified 20 botanicals in our university and it can be used as safe pesticides by the farmers, particularly in vegetable crops. Then resistance varieties, we have think integrated pest management, bio pesticide, bio controls, botanicals, then soil health management through soil health curves, then alternatives of 
Jumias. And we have to think very seriously for the Jumias. And uh, Zoom cycle is now reducing from 20 years to five to 10 years. And if we cannot give the alternative, still they will burn, the slash and the burn, then all biodiversity. We're talking about the biodiversity conservation. It will be lowest medicine and aromatic plants. That is the need of the hour. And the last point is the, we have to give, that is the opportunity beyond farm, food processing, primary food processing unit, integrated cold chain management, marketing efficiency, packaging, promotion, and linkage, credit flow, farmers, bank, glaze, uh, linkage, crop insurance, decision-making power, growers association, producers company, then farming skill development trainings. These are, we can recommend and we can work in conversation more with the other stakeholders. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Premjit Singh. Very valuable points. Thank you very much for bringing all of them here. Uh, we next move to Dr. Dilip Kumar, former director of the Central Institute of Fisheries Education, Mumbai, and an FAO consultant. Presently, he's based in Delhi, a fisheries aquaculture specialist. And uh, not taking more time at this time, I would request uh, Dr. Dilip Kumar for your kind intervention. Kindly unmute, unmute, unmute. Uh, Honorable Chancellor, Chancellor of uh, uh, EAU. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my senior colleague at the same time, colleague and batchmate, Dr. S. Yapunsar. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me. And it was a really just to say, uh, good learning for me during these last two days. A number of uh, papers were there. <coughs> covering that you see various aspects of uh, agriculture based activities that is going on in northeast region but i have a very lim because I, my knowledge is limited my specialization is no. uh, <laughs> just limited to fish mm -hmm. and aquaculture so related to that i have very quick two three four points the first one what i saw during last two days that uh, integrated farming is the way of farming of uh, farming households in northeastern region well this is very very important and you just we, we can see that although this system we try to promote in different parts of our country but but just we have a decimal success in that is mainly because here they have been able to develop this integrated system where it is a functional integration of their own and because of that it is working instead elsewhere we have tried to uh, come out with a uh, mixed practices with proximity of different farming system together so that was uh, physical proximity here it is a functional integration so this is the area where we just to see must because the people they want and we must this is the area where we need to strengthen uh, and there are just to see valid reasons for that uh, because it gives us opportunity to optimize uh, resources available at uh, at our uh, it is not purchased it is it is um, available with the farming households and it gives that you see now even for corona it is required that we should have a better immune system better nutrition for that it required that we should we should depend upon diversified food system and that integrated farming system ensures that just you are going to have uh, well almost say uh, uh, almost all the nutrients required for the household then uh, <clears throat> uh, and then there just the, they need not depend upon or they have a very just to see limited uh, dependence on uh, uh, inputs purchased from outside and uh, you see because of this it is also cost is also reduced and it helps the farmers in minimizing risk and or as, as, as spreading risk so this is very very useful what we have been able to do 
uh, to strengthen this one, even from our ICR system also, just we have been since last so many years earlier, when Dr. Eponsai was there and uh, that time itself, it just started and Dr. Uh, Mangalara Sai was also there under natural resource development program. But there we came that just to promote the ag system and because any agriculture universities, they have all, all discipline together. Because of that, that program was especially given to agriculture universities, including CAU. So you have a um, crop, you have also horticulture, you have a livestock, you have fisheries. So you can you can develop a model and then that can be shown, that can be demonstrated and after that, uh, the, the local people will uh, adopt it. But I have seen that, see, the system came very well. It was more, much more efficient, but it was highly capital incentive, uh, intensive. Because of that, it is not possible for any farm, farmer to develop such a system in their own vicinity because of limited, uh, because of the local condition at the same time, their capacity. So I would like to say that this is the area that requires a strengthening, but it requires a bottom-up approach. Must see that what farmers are doing and they're only how just we can help them improving and uh, their own system so that it is more effective, more, more efficient, and then uh, more economical. So that, that is required just to see North East system, North East system. Second one, uh, <clears throat> I'd like to say that uh, due, due to Corona now, entire, that you see the classical extension system of that is going to the farmer and sowing demonstration and after that helping them, training them at that, that is really gone. Your movement is restricted and then now just is because of that, we have really very, it is, you see that so fast, now, now our system has, it is di digitized completely. You need not go there and then uh, messages and informations are just to see efficiently delivered. But in doing so, we also need to be very careful because at the primary producer level, there are two types of people, a middle class, farmer, where they have been able to adopt, they have really means so that you see, they are using this digitized, they have access to that, they have been able to manage, but there are also, we have a hardcore poor fishing community, those who are resource community, even agriculture workers. You see, we must see that if they are not excluded, digitally they are not excluded. So we must see that how we can do, I don't have any answer, but I, I understand that this is also one of the area that we should work upon. Then uh, another, uh, just I would like to say that how this integrated farming in Vietnam, Dr. Yapan knows, in Vietnam, it was a, already a system, but Ho Chi Minh, he found that this is a really good system. Now it needs to be a strength then. So he mainstream this integrated farming system, they called it back system, into their overall uh, overall movement for freedom, uh, freedom struggle. And that was so that is he wanted that every household should have proper nutrition so that they, they are, their health is good and they can become a really a strong fighter uh, uh, to win win their liberation. And that really worked. Even after that also, it started working. Now it requires also that you see what type of policy support we should provide. Policy support and then also institutional support. Policy support is there. We always say everyone, every state, they say that integrated farming system should be done. But how it can be done? Because all these departments, they have a different domain. Agriculture is a separate domain. There is an emperor, secretary is the emperor of that. Then, then you have a department of uh, animal husbandry, then department of fisheries, and nobody just to see compromise to come to, just to see talk at one platform to help. How just as they can help a farmer who needs, uh, who needs these, these supports from three different departments. 
how to just do it, what type of institutional reorganization should be done. For example, I would like to say that in Burma, uh, now five ministries have become merged to have only one ministry. And that is now it is known as Department of uh, uh, Agriculture and Irrigation, merging with Department of Rural Development, Cooperatives, and also uh, um, uh, fisheries and livestock all together. Now it is uh, only one. The same time in, in, in Vietnam also, it is only one that is the Department of Agriculture and Rural Development. So all, all departments are together, especially extension they have one. In that extension, under that extension, all, all pe the people, different teams, they all work together. So that way they can provide this system. The other one that uh, financial support, in, just I'm finishing, uh, financial support, like uh, uh, we have that you see you can get a loan, but you can get loan for crop or you can go get loan for aquaculture. You can get loan only for livestock. There is no flexibility. There should be a package. This, is, this loan is given for agriculture, household agriculture development. And then just to see you get it, it is flexible. Depending upon your needs, the farmer should be allowed to spend that one. So th this is only a few points mm -hmm. I wanted to discuss mm -hmm. before you. Thank you very Dr. much. Dr. Dilip Kumar, thank you so much. You have brought in very, very important points of nutrition for in diversified farming and a very important point of extension. Now, when we are talking of online and all that, you are very right. There are people who do not have the means and then people are asking, will it create a divide between the people who possess you know, capacities? I'm sure you know, there are three extension specialists who are uh, coming up in the session. I'm sure they would address it. And last very point, very important point you made is, now that we have so many schemes have been announced, but as you said, should, there should be a strong integration between the ministries and the departments. Then only the farmer can get the benefit the loan or the technology or the inputs, anything. Otherwise, you know, again, it will go back to the, so very, thank you very much for, for very valuable points. Thank you very much, Dr. Sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. We move on to the next distinguished speaker, Dr. K.K. Satpati, former director of the National Institute of Natural Fibers, Engineering and Technology. And uh, this is very important in the con context of, you know, harvest, post-harvest and several other things. Dr. Satpati is based in Calcutta, and then uh, we are very, very glad to receive him, invite him. Uh, Dr. Satpati, please, we request you kindly. Uh, thank you very much. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Okay. I think I'm very much thankful to organizer making me a member of the panel. We are luminaries like Dr. Ayappan, Dr. Bujarudwa, Dr. Divit Kumar, and other some members. Uh, I will make uh, very three short points based on my, uh, I was the whole day I was listening to lectures, I learned a lot and uh, I spent quite a long years in Northeast. Uh, from that, I think three short points I will make. Uh, first of all, I think uh, in Northeast, most important natural resource is the water. And this water, uh, per capita water in Northeast is much, much higher than uh, other parts of India. And uh, this is mostly remained unutilized. So rainwater management is the one of the major issues. We can transform the agriculture into a great extent in Northeast. Rainwater management means starting from rainfall and uh, uh, checking it over hill slopes and uh, utilizing uh, through diversion, through uh, dugout compounds, through uh, utilization of hill springs. And with this, a large area can be made terraces, which is bench terrace is normally not popular in Northeast. But once it is Pani Kheti or wet terrace is there, uh, it is readily uh, accepted. And major area, many shifting cultivation area, which is normally you can see in Angami, Shakasang areas of Nagaland, many areas can be converted into uh, uh, bench terrace, uh, to Pani Kheti area. And a uh, lot of area can be converted into permanent cultivation. 
apart from that there is a lot of drinking water shortage in many areas that can be utilized for drinking water so this is i think one of the important issue uh, so this micro water set based water issues development very very small water sets this small water uh, harvesting and other schemes can be developed and which can be utilized for uh, not only for agriculture fishery or many other things so that is uh, one of the most important issue i think uh, for productivity of the uh, region the second issue i want to highlight is uh, you know this northeast especially hills literacy retain very high much higher than it is not remain a low literacy area it is a very high literacy rates and this kind of image of farmers with a drudgery going for shifting cultivation long distance travel with a heart it is doesn't uh, fit to that literate uh, so one of the basic issue it has to be mechanized agriculture mechanized and this mechanization has come a long way when we started 30 years back now there are uh, lightweight small size small small uh, mechanically power operated implements are available and it can be uh, 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 they are in the very high hill slope in fact in northeast today uh, we talk about shifting cultivation like thousands of years ago and all implements were developed during that time but afterwards also there was hoe culture there was a plow culture there was mechanized agriculture and in northeast all are side by side many rich people are bringing uh, uh, very uh, high 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 quality machines uh, so all are uh, there in uh, northeast today uh, so i think we need a some kind of a uh, scheme which is now emphasized custom hiring uh, government of india giving financial uh, help subsidies and many way so to bring uh, young uh, people for agriculture and stop migration uh, one of the issue is that custom hiring and mechanization of the hill agriculture which is possible uh, my third point is uh, i think as long as we talk about agriculture we cannot talk we cannot uh, evade the issue of city uh, cultivation zoom uh, today even in zoom cultivated area there are many areas system is breaking down because of cycle and all that 3 4 years but there are areas mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Please go on. Please speak. Ah, there are areas where the cycle is more than uh, eight years, and there technical intervention in the form of uh, crops, in the form of nutrients, in the form of soil conservation measures, small implements possible, and possible also uh, this zoom fallow converting into profitable agroforestry. So. this uh, where there is a possible for improvement especially where zoom cycle is more than 8 years so i think that is a appropriate schemes are necessary and at this context also there is a big change in northeast nowadays earlier there was a communal uh, ownership of land it was a customary laws which used to govern this now there is a first change of uh, uh, land ownership A lot of private ownership has come up, and all are in a very unplanned way, not any registered or anything, uh, uh, in a localized way. So some kind of revenue laws can be necessary, and to make them formal private lands where many type of agriculture schemes can be implemented. This is uh, most important at this stage. so having said all these three we are talking about uh, many ways uh, integrated farming system and this integrated farming system it was a major issue of research in northeast complex right from 70s and 80s and it was a long time it was a lot of demonstration has been taken up and lot of negative points criticism also was there but today i think that is more relevant what was that what we call used to call it that watershed based farming system watershed based integrated farming system so there are three or four points was there one was the uh, one was that that in a 
uh, hill slope, very small micro water set demarcation is possible around one hectare, even less than one hectare, 1 1.5 hectare. And within that water set, what micro water set, a lot of conservation, major incorporation is possible, like contour trenching, contour banding, and terracing. So this is the first point in that watershed based farming system. Second was that mixed land use, like agri hearty silvi pastoral, agri pastoral. So many of the uh, oh. possible. Uh, and uh, third was that uh, livestock uh, as a subsidiary. Uh, because livestock is always integrated in the agriculture in Northeast. And fourth was the water harvesting pond uh, uh, in, the, in the lower rate of water set. Uh, uh, so the water can be stored and can be irrigation or fishery. The reason was that many times we are talking here only economic part of the uh, agriculture, what the profit given. What we are ignoring mostly is that what is the happen to two natural resources, soil and water. And many yeah. of our, or any of our uh, research shows that the base soil is very high. We don't see it. And uh, many is Zoom, Palo, and many other places. So uh, there was a lot of uh, soil erosion, which has effect after quite some year, not immediately, after some years. So this kind of- Yeah, thank you, Dr. Chattati. Uh, yeah, time is running out, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then I think that is the thing. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Dr. Satpati, sir, thank you so much for all the points. I mean, your, your experience, you know, with regard to water, zoom, and then farmers, email, mechanization, all this taken very well. Thank you so much, Dr. Satpati. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we move on to our next uh, esteemed speaker, Dr. A.K. Tripathi, the director of the Atari in, uh, in, in Assam. Dr. Tripathi, please. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Are you? I'm Arul, sir. Yes, yes, very much. Okay, sir. So uh, thank yes, you. Uh, good afternoon, to every honorable uh, chief guest of today and chairman of the esteem yes. panel members. Sir, already three speaker already spoken details about that strategy. So I'm not going to repeat. One or two are very important, sir. Already that how to that COVID how we take up. Uh, Dr. Dilip Kumar sir already told that uh, diversification in integrated farming system. But another thing in this area, for unity development, we have medicinal plant like IUS have developed. So we can also have some, uh, some uh, uh, study and for that main, making that uh, unity development through the medicinal plant, the bay leaf, black pepper, turmeric, masala, all things we are having. So we make uh, one pouch or something like that we can develop also so this can be another source of that uh, that community development so that is another area is there and one already diversified uh, agriculture protein already that cereal protein all together to indicate farming systems second nutritional garden already explained in this regard i will i would like to uh, state uh, state sir many state like for our already they have taken decision that each constituency, 60 constituency is there, and the 200 nutritional garden will be established each constituency also. So some state government started also, and for our initiative also, in that uh, 47 KVK, we have already started, and in there, what we are trying to do, sir, because uh, the Northeast, for example, Manipur, Honorable MP has told that they are very good varieties of the rice, having a lot of uh, protein, zinc, and other uh, other elements, which can also be promoted in the for that uh, uh, nutrition security, even though for that popularizing to the different intervention also. Then taking that uh, my, my, the migrated labor, we have started skill mapping, and skill mapping already started, sir. All the state government, for example, I have instructed the Dutch agriculture. They have given that they have given instruction to the East DC to this, start the skill mapping. After the skill mapping at the KVK, as per instruction, the government, our ICR annual DG said that KVK to also plan for long term and short term, because long term and short term. So what what we realize of a skill mapping will identify which area they have in the skill. As you have already told, the reorient skill. And that skill agriculture skill program, we are trying to if they have the some skill, uh, 
uh, then we can give that short term program like that beekeeping mushroom cultivation burning compost we can immediately within two months they can get the benefit also so these area also planning even the for seed production also there will be as per that their skill and as per their knowledge we can provide the training even the entrepreneurs in development we have the very good incubation center also there so under aria project whatever experience we have gained we are trying that that for the sikkim that uh, tunnel tunnel uh, uh, polytunnels for the pigri is a very important sector we are definitely there we can mushroom also the mushroom we have different product also sir for example sir in anaria products more than 20 30 products already not only they are making the uh, dry mushroom pakora then many many thing there so even though they can start the person who is not having they can uh, take the mushroom face mushroom and they can start their business also that area we are exploring also there and it is coming very well also then third importance and uh, the long term strategy sir i like to mention here that we have the north is only have a 236 mark regulated market and as per our requirement we have 600 so we are having not unregulated market also and that now that the government of india is in one nation one uh, market so we have advantage but disadvantage also there how because we have surpluses in food and vegetable if the food and vegetable are properly not uh, if they increasing the food and vegetable how can it store we have only that uh, 64 i think 60 uh, uh, 23 23 cold storage 64 cold storage and the capacity for 1.25 million ton also so we have not enough storage also so now that we have advantage but is disadvantage also so we are to do think over the long uh, long because there, there is no restriction of the retention capacity people can uh, the, uh, uh, hold the mayor. so our farmers how they are benefiting that strategy and i request to state government Uh, honorable mp also this line how the state government should take more active role so in coming future we cannot we cannot uh, will we will face any problem and a second important also there uh, what i would like to say that that marketing we are now allowing everybody to do market study for farmers sgo npo even the fmc also and most of the fmc in the north is not in that modified as the interest of the farmer but there is a one clause also there when there will be agreement also chapter 4 chapter 2 there should be there will be there there will be standard good practices economic practices and that is practices to be developed by the uh, icr at any agency and the agency has to be uh, given a responsibility so that's why if there there will be some dispute the economic practices as per the requirement of the both competitors so i am telling that these are the some issues also coming coming in future also so that to be taken in account and this is the state government and central to be formulate and uh, uh, regarding the uh, uh, we are also the doubling farm income we have 52 uh, 54 will village we have uh, uh, that that we have rice fellow about 5 5 lakh hectare in artis also there although we are taking rice and we are taking pulses so there is scope they increase the pulse production because they have seen in pulses except the fruit and vegetable we are seeing but very good that the fish production sir under your dynasty now the earlier 52 52% now we do 30% so now these areas are there fish culture all the art in bharat already honorable uh, this is have already explained so i am not going to repeat also there but there should be proactive that then the bamboo 16 total 15.6 lakh hectare is bamboo in country and 60% uh, is 65 lakh to north is also there now the government has already imposed that import duty 25% so it will went to the north east but we have to go for skill training also there like the bamboo the government of india has also declared that 10 uh, 20% for biofuel so that can utilize also there even though in spite also so this area beekeeping have all, all potential with the 5 lakh hectare now that we have that uh, about the uh, 3 lakh hectare in the i seat if that we can put but the uh, that uh, that beekeeping we can get the at least at least that 5000 6000 additional income so all together we have to apply for the immediate policy and long term purpose and for the marketing cold storage post out value and training for the to the incubation uh, uh, that abi then area will be very beneficial to tackle the all the problem thank you very much sir dr tripathi thank you very much
thank you very much from your field experience you have given a number of occasions as options thank you so much grateful to you we next move on to dr b c deka director atari based in barapani in meghalaya dr deka please yeah uh, good afternoon everybody respected chairman sir after a long a long time back i have seen you over here i am so much delighted uh, respected mp dilip kumar sir premjit sir and all other dignitaries uh, in fact uh, today i would like to restrict myself in the field of horticulture only because yesterday i talked about the overall agricultural scenario and what are the problems and prospects in agriculture so today i would like to give some quick points as per the suggestion of our honorable chairman some short term measures and as well as some long term measures so as we all know i mean yesterday i talked i mean uh, in the entire northeastern region uh, roughly from 1 lakh hectare area we have been uh, producing more than 10 lakh metric ton of fruits and vegetables and in this particular sector we are already surplus we have uh, i mean almost 23 lakh metric ton surplus in both fruits and vegetable but then productivity level is almost static in fruits whereas there is a marginal increase in vegetable having said that i mean for the development of horticulture per se in the entire country and northeast there are two very important program the government of india launched for the entire country one program is midh mission for integrated development in horticulture and another important program very specific to the northeast is movcd ner mission velocity development in northeastern region so i mean what i would like to uh, immediately for a short term measure what i'd like to suggest uh, as a policy uh, decision as of now the mofcd ner is restricted only in some selected districts so in my opinion since government of india has been given lot of emphasis on organic uh, uh, movement in the entire northeastern region if this particular mofcd ner is expanded to all the potential district of northeast probably many of the migrants could be channelized their whole energy could be channelized for organic product development organic crop production utilizing the benefit of this particular program this is my first important short term measure what i'd like to suggest the second short term measure i would like to suggest sir marketing all along an issue in not only uh, in cereals or pulses but it is very very critical in horticulture crop because by and large horticulture are perishable in nature and it happens because our production system are very very sporadic if we produce some vegetables here the volume is so less nobody will go there to pick it up so to avoid that particular program so i would like to promote or i would like to urge upon the respective government to take a policy decision for promotion of horticulture more particularly in vegetable in cluster approach instead of growing in a i mean sporadic area let us grow in a cluster approach if tomato is grown in a particular area a 100 hectare cluster should be there if cabbage is there 100 hectare cluster should be there like that a cluster kind of approach should be adopted so that marketing do not become a critical issue the third point organic we should go in a big way for organic product development but then with a caution we should not take all the crops we should take only the niche crop wherever we have got strength others they do not have but then we have the quality say for example we have the strength in pineapple we should go in a big way for pineapple production in organic manner we have strength in ginger and turmeric we should go in a big way for organic uh, level of production in ginger and turmeric we have strength in kashi mandarin we should go in a big way in production of organic product so this way we should identify some niche area and we should start producing i mean uh, the organic uh, products utilizing the local resources at the same time yesterday also i told today also i would like to highlight again input production should also be emphasized equally until and unless we have our own input then organic uh, movement will be simply a slogan it is not going to help us the next important short term measure what i would like to i mean uh, of course uh, many of the panelists they have already told you see particularly the the horticulture particularly the fruits in the hills whenever you go for planting 
planting is not that very very easy now there are some portable machinery is available say for example for bed making there are machines which are not present over here in the northeast for peat making there are machines available for weeding there are machines available so respective state government should promote this kind of machineries so that particularly the fruit orchard development becomes very very easy if we go for uh, i mean utilization of this particular machinery particularly for peat making bed preparation and weeding it will go a, in a long way for the development of a uh, fruit sector as a whole the the, the next important short term measure is always is a cause of concern is processing and valuation even though under mobcdr program i mean there is a uh, i mean uh, i mean um, some some kind of uh, i mean provision is there for total valuation management but then it is specific to only some districts so in my opinion the total value chain processing and valuation should be the top priority for promotion of vertical sharing in north east so these are some of the i mean uh, short term measure along with that since you have talked about the migrant migrated workers now so where they will go until and unless they have money yesterday i talked about the credit debit ratio in the entire north eastern region is is less than 40% elsewhere it is other state is more than 100% so the respective state government should pressurize the state i mean respective the bank they should increase the credit debit ratio so that they give loan to this particular migrant worker but loan is loan will not be sufficient until and unless there is a sound project so who will prepare that project it is called the detailed project report bank will not give loan until and unless a detailed project report is there so perhaps the central agriculture university assam agriculture university even the icr research complex kvk and other rnd organization should help this particular migrant worker in developing some sound bankable project in the form of detailed project report so that it becomes easier for them to get the bank finance so these are uh some of my random thoughts so far short term measures are concerned so for long term measures are concerned there is always on critical issues in the entire northeastern region whatever data we are today we are getting this much area this much hectare it is all very erroneous with my full conviction i mean nobody to be blamed for that whatever data we are getting it is highly erroneous in nature today we have all the ict platform we have cis we have that to data data brief brief data brief time is right finish over to, to next 2 minutes yeah. yeah yeah please we should we should utilize this gis and spatial mapping for mapping of this particular issues so that get we we get the appropriate data for area and production coverage my second important i mean long term measures uh, what i would like to suggest yesterday also i told of course many of the state government they have already taken up as dr tripathi has told the promotion of the nutritional garden so that should be uh, another uh, long term measures the the another important measures bamboo bamboo is an important crop for the horticulture crops we have a bamboo mission but irony is who is running this particular program bamboo is a horticulture crop i mean as per the uh, new development but bamboo mission project is lying with the industry department in respective states industry department they cannot uh, really do the justice for the promotion of bamboo so in my opinion there should be some change of policy changes bamboo should immediately be bamboo mission should be immediately be, be handed over either to the horticulture department or the other i mean uh, department like maybe agroforestry or some kind of uh, that particular department in the uh, instead of food industries a uh, food i mean industries uh, department so these are some of my i mean random thoughts we which i thought uh, i should tell so with this uh, i thank you once again for giving me the opportunity to share my uh, random thoughts thank you sir dr dekha thank you very much very valuable points you know you have talked about organic produce marketing portable machinery and in bamboo as a major diversifying uh, option thank you so much uh, dr dekha now we are being joined by dr k m bujarbarwa honorable vice chancellor of the assam agriculture university just retired and uh, dr bujarbarwa welcome to this uh, 
panel discussion, very distinguished speaker we have with in Dr. Bujar Barwa, uh, former director of the ICR complex, former deputy director general at the ICR headquarters, and uh, as I said, the vice chancellor, esteemed vice chancellor of the Assam Agriculture University, and many more things. Dr. Bujar Barwa is. We are so happy to welcome you, sir, and uh, thank you so much. And we request your kind uh, remarks at this stage in this important webinar. And uh, I must mention you are almost the Bhishma of the Northeastern agriculture. So whatever you say, not only animal food production, all aspects of agriculture, we look forward to your remarks. Dr. Bujar Barwa, please. Sir, unmute. Doctor, unmute. Uh, is it coming? Yes. It is coming, no? Yes, yes. Oh, thank you. It's so nice to see you, sir, after <laughs> such a long <laughs> thank time. You. Thank you, thank you. You, you look equally handsome. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> your wisdom radiating from your face. No, no. <laughs> So nice to see you. All other panelists, actually, I'm sorry, there was some internet failure because of heavy rain here in Guwahati for about almost one and a half hour. <coughs> That's why I'm late. I thought I will listen to one or two panelists first, but since you have already given me the responsibility, I'm totally blank. I will say whatever comes no. to mind. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> think, uh, no, no, actually, First of all, yesterday also I congratulated uh, AISA and the Central Agricultural University for holding this uh, webinar meeting. Uh, this meeting, as I could see, is little different than other discussions that we, we keep on having, sort of seminars and others. This is different in the sense that the very title says that during COVID, what should be the policy strategy of science? I would add one more, during and after COVID, you know, these two things. So this is a sort of discussion where ritual things we should not be discussing. Uh, what we should do during COVID, as you know, <clears throat> sir, in agriculture sector as a whole, <clears throat> many farmers have suffered a huge loss, particularly in horticultural crops. Uh, Pedi, etc. So far as uh, this region is concerned, uh, some, of course, they do have borrow pedi, which was to be harvested at that time. Uh, also, some of the oil seed, oil seed was harvested. But basically, the farmers suffered from the horticultural produce. That is, in, in agri sector, it is that. In animal husbandry sector, this particularly they suffered from uh, the the poultry birds and rearing of pigs, that sector they support, even cattle. Because although a little later, the marketing of foodstuff was opened up after 15, 20 days, marketing of horticultural produce was opened up. But the thing is, the feed supply units for animals, the medicines for animals, all were closed. The thing, the animal farmers found it so difficult to actually manage their farms which is why they had to go for distress sale. Many poultry birds, the poultry birds which used to be sold at around 250, 300 rupees a kg, I know they had to sell it at 50 rupees. A huge loss has been incurred by these farmers. Similarly, in the initial period, milk sector had also suffered a lot because you know there was no buyer. And then actually now overall thing, now also what we have seen, people are little, you know, selective as to what food to accept and from whom you know because many things it has gone to many people's mind that even the fruits vegetables and all other things might also carry corona so they are so very selective so marketing has not picked up the way it should have uh, been picked up so that is uh, one thing so first what we should be doing i think at this stage number one help that we all can do particularly the government can do is to compensate this loss to some extent, and either in the form of cash or in the form of kind. Now the thing is, say for example, if another thing what they could they should do rather, if those horticultural farmers and poultry farmers, for example, if they, they had taken some loan from the bank, 
to start their you know with ravi vegetables that loan should be waived that it will not be much anyway because in this part of the country a huge you know type of cultivations are not there so i think that will be an in incentive or else they are losing paid on agriculture as a whole <clears throat> and then then yet another measure for example the so i mean african swine fever had killed many some 23000 pigs have been killed in assam now similarly some thousands in arunachal fortunately it has not spread to other states but the thing is that has also been a huge loss to this particular group of farmers that will have to be immediately compensated so that they can restart it uh, and in the um, while compensating even if we do not compensate with cash to the crop farmers or this immediately we should help them with the kharif season seeds so kharif season is coming right now they are the good quality rice seed agara bagara if government procure and give it at a very subsidized rate to the farmer that will also compensate their loss to some extent or else, um, what has happened the money they would have got from the ravi crop sale they would have utilized that for kharif input purchase now since that has not happened i think this much help will have to be done you know to the farming community to regain their confidence and do it <clears throat> in a better way now gradually we will have to see how the you know faith is brought back faith in farming is brought back. as you know <clears throat> we have seen we have analyzed the issue in in assam particularly the covid thing has opened up a new opportunity in a there are quite a you know number of opportunities that have, that have been unfolded one both the public and the government sector has understood that it is the agri sector analyzed in northeastern region which can contribute in a better way to economy stage economy which can accommodate number of people through you know employment right from its you know production to our value chain up up to the complete value chain to marketing in, in that sense. so we had also seen say as you know sir northeastern region agriculture as a whole is of sustenance level you, you know that all, there is one complete season where people do not do much now the thing is we will have to see what, that is what i have also suggested to the government or some government that one season after the kharif season everything is vacant nothing no crop is grown excepting in few parts in the state of assam in lower assam belt upper assam middle assam completely vacant what i suggest is if these farmers do not want to do farming after kharif then take this land on lease give it for 6 months to those migrant laborers let them do work for 6 months and hand over the land back after 6 months with with a share of the profit that they will earn at least 6 months employment they they would get out of that land do you know sir we have seen around 15 lakh hectare of area remain uncultivated in assam alone during this you know post uh, thing during ravi season now Per hectare, even if you employ two percent, give the opportunity to two percent, thirty lakh people can be absorbed for six months. For another six months, they can have other other kind of livelihood option. <clears throat> so, man, those some stringent measures. Now, what I am telling, there is in northeastern region. Our say we are growing at around two point two point five percent in agriculture, particularly in Assam. we have seen that this growth could be taken up to minimum 6% provided you know all the all the backstopping in terms of quality inputs and others are are, are, are given now the thing is if it can be taken to 8% per, 6% minimum what is stopping us this stop it is only the policy part which is stopping us. so now the thing is so we will have to impress upon the policy makers that you you have to definitely invest to get return now what we have seen sir in this three sectors in northeastern region as you know industrially it is not very sound excepting 
Assam, where oil and tea industries are there. Now, in service sector, that was an upcoming sector which has been very badly affected now. The, the, yeah. the, the, the uh, I mean, uh, unemployment ratio going up that way because service sector has suffered a lot and industry sector in Assam suffered, particularly tea garden and the oil industry. So the, some of their people will also have to wear job. Service sector, I mean, sir, right from tourism to travel to hotel industry, all this, all were closed. So means if the, those people have now come up looking for jobs. So can agriculture absorb them? If can, to, to what extent? That is the moot question. All the people who are now looking for jobs cannot be absorbed in agriculture or allied sector. How many we can? So we have seen so at least each state of northeastern region, the eight states, if they take pragmatic step by, you know, a paradigm shift from sustainable level of agriculture to semi-commercial and commercial mode of agriculture, which is the need of the hour. Our produce is scattered, it is less. So therefore, you know, marketable surplus, you cannot immediately, you know, uh, uh, collect. So we, when we will go for semi-commercial mode and then commercial mode in some sector, then what will happen? The production part, the production part together with the input supply, everything will be assured and then their collection, their you know, sort of processing, their packaging, their branding, everything will be much easier. Yes, sir. Anything, sir? No, uh, we usually have what, 10 minutes for each speaker. Oh, so. oh, oh okay. okay. <laughs> now the thing is, just, just we'll, 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 I'll just conclude. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll just, but the thing is, we yeah. have to go in a different mode, totally different. And this is the opportunity COVID has given. We must encourage this opportunity in, in terms of poultry and these things are business models. So I invite people from outside as well. 45 lakh eggs per day, yesterday also I said, is coming to the northeastern region. 45 lakh eggs into 365 days. You can imagine the number. What we had seen, the, this sector itself, you know, attracts around 800, 8,500 crore rupees. So there is a business of 8,500 crore rupees for the people of Northeastern region. Only the thing is we have to know how to do. Bigger a sector, we, we have a business of around 5,000 crore rupees in Northeastern region. So the whole thing is how we now take pragmatic steps through appropriate policy, appropriate funding to encase this opportunity which we have not yet encased. We have been talking about it but actually, in real sense, we have not entered into or ventured into this. I think, I think this particular discussion, if it leads that way, that the support base is also there. I, I will not say government of India is not supporting, but that support base has to be now directed towards this type of actual farming. Then everything will be very fine. I feel, sir. Thank you. And sir, thank you so much. A very, very practical, you know, solution with your experience in the Northeast. You talked of the losses for the farmers, the marketing, market linkages, the animal issues, and the potential for, uh, you know, enhancing this. And it's also a very practical solution of this leasing of land after the Karif. In fact, uh, you are uh, uh, Honorable Member of Parliament from Manipur, Dr. R.K. Ranjanji is also listening to you. So these are absolutely doable things. And as you said, these are the policy imperatives. Uh, Dr. Bhujadar Barwasa, thank you very much for your remarks. Very valuable. Thank you, Dr. Uh, thank kindly, you. kindly, kindly continue with us for some more time. Uh, we have the last speaker, Dr. Yeah. Rasan Saha, and then some questions also will be there. Once again, yeah. thank you, Dr. Bhujadar Barwasa. Thank you. Now, thank you. We move on to the last speaker of the session, very esteemed panelist, Dr. Ratan Kumar Saha, the director of the extension education at the Central Agriculture University and also the coordinator for the whole uh, program. Dr. Saha, please. Thank you, sir. Honorable uh, chief guest of today's function and also our honorable chancellor, A. Ayappan, sir, and all the VCs, panelists. Uh, actually, all the speakers already talked about that, but just uh, nothing is left. However, 
just i am just showing uh, sharing some slides so that uh, i can uh, complete all these thing uh, in short so you know that uh, this uh, your ladder of this northeast actually farm exclusively for home consumption and secondly nowadays farmers are doing some primarily for their consumption rest of the things they are marketing but we have to go ahead to the farming for primary for market and some home consumption than exclusively for the market so our policy should be for upper two ladder uh, scale so for this reason uh, you can say that it should be pro farmers whatever the plan should be there and it should be farmer first focus and income and uh, prosperity in central and then it should be shifted from central uh, you can say cereal dominance to horticulture and livestock and fisheries then strengthening of kvks is very important nowadays the kvks are giving more emphasis for doing all the all the jobs of the central government and other uh, government uh, activities uh, what not they are doing but the manpower is very low very less though that's why this more attention has to be given for strengthening the all the kvks particularly in the northeast as because uh, hill terrains and all these thing organic farming already talked about that it should be a uh, cluster based and village producer group should be there apo should be there then upscaling of I, nowadays it should be climate smart integrated farming system only integrated farming system may not be uh, suitable but it should be climate smart then documentation of the indigenous knowledge not northeast uh, northeast is very rich in indigenous knowledge so it should be well documented and validation should be there and then cluster mode cluster based cultivation is required and it should be common online marketing platform should be there apo should be there implementation of farmer friendly long term export policy should be there in the northeast also and then structural reforms as land leasing already talked about that and then contract farming also is there private agriculture marketing homestead market and small stalls now is is, is very essential for the marketing of the uh, farmers product then again export supportive infrastructure should be there logistics should be there and then conversion of fallow lands in the northeast so many fallow lands are there it should be converted for cultivation of local germplasm and all these thing next uh, investors meet should be regularly involved in the rural area not in the cities then policy maker should be high rate of interest bank interest should given to the farmers so that they can like a senior citizen so that then bank deposit should be increased then the unemployed youth that is agri and allied sector there should be you uh, they should be involved in covid or your and consult and as a group uh, they should work and there's uh, as because smart uh, uh, our central government is giving the smart city now we should think about the smart and green clean village concept also then again policies for encouraging migrant workers how they should stay in the uh, their local area and also they should uh, give the training and support and all these thing vocational training then again biosecurity is a major issue in the all the area is because northeast is a transboundary uh, area or uh, porous borders are there so that is required very much and then strengthening the agricultural extension services that is mobile agro advisory is very much important in the central agriculture university now in the six state we have the mobile advi agro advisory but all the projects should link with that uh, mobile agro advisory then again documentation and already i talked about that then extension of cage culture pan culture in the open area has to be you know that Ma 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 manipur and also assam there are large area of is there Uh, open culture then assured irrigation is very much important for the hill, area, hill areas water harvesting already talked about that and this covid area covid period and also afterwards grow your own fish grow your own vegetables own animals own fruits that is aquaponic hydroponics bioflow floating cultivation vertical farming all these thing homestead farming has to be given due consideration then assured policy health assured uh, you can say policy should be there health assurance for the farmers 
for in the rural area assured quality education for the farm families in rural area so otherwise they will not retain in the low farm area and agri tourism already talked about that technology park food park also has to be done and involvement of the women in the northeast women is very um, very active so for for them also we should be a strong policy to involve them in the farming uh, system value addition program then again you can send a basis of uh, cover convergence we uh, we already got the uh, your ministry from the ministry that uh, the central agriculture university has a knowledge partner for monitoring all the projects extension projects in the northeast so we have already submitted the mo the need based job based and skill based strategies and policy interventions in structural agricultural education for delivering the best services in the changing scenario then more emphasis to be given vocational and distance education in local languages in different enterprises for unemployed youth then policy to establish the farm school in, at village level it should be required uh, need of the hour then again animal based animal uh, disease surveillance already i talked about our uh, honorable um, uh, your gm bajur bodwa sir also is there and both farm animals and fish uh, fishes disease consortium in the northeast is very much important export system of for management of the export system this is uh, required for the helping the farmers in animal health and disease Uh, surveillance so whatever the uh, policy we devise it should be smart it should be specific it should be measurable it should be attainable or achievable it should be again uh, relevant to the northeast and it should be timely execution is required thank you all ओके It is okay. Yeah, yeah. We are hearing. Yeah. yeah. Thanks to Dr. Saha for a smart presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> now, now we have uh, some time for questions, remarks. Any, any of our colleagues in the audience or anyone would you like to say something? Our colleagues, audience. Any questions? Any questions? The Mr. Mr. Ashish. Mr. Ashish Kandelwal from the AISA, you want to say something? Yes, sir. I want to say something. Yeah, Mr. Ashish Kandelwal from the All India Agricultural Students Association, based in New Delhi. Mr. Ashish. Uh, thank you, sir, for giving very nice lecture, and uh, thank you, sir, be present here in the plenary session. Uh, uh, sir, we, I want to say that we have enough population. and government also introduced enough schemes throughout the years but we are not able to take advantage of that so there is need to change the mindset of the youth who are of age group of 12 to 18 years or the, or who are studying between 8 to 12th class so that they can choose their field of study accordingly it is prime needed by the ministry of human resource development that they must include agriculture in the curriculum in an effective way and must decide must for different aspect such as the, what is the advantage of higher education entrepreneurship and involvement of banking professionals in the curriculum further in the agriculture courses like in the under graduation program inclusion of industrial internship at bsc second year interaction with banking personnel with students that can help to change the mindset of the people so sir i think i just want to say uh, the thing that we have enough things in the by the government for the students but we are not able to grasp it 
so for that we need to change the policy so that each and every student can decide their field whether they want to go for the higher study or they want to go for the entrepreneurship so this thing i want to say sir thank you thank you very much our vice chancellor uh, dr bujar uh, barwa and dr premjit singh both are there they may like to say something professor bujar barwa uh, former vice chancellor of aau please oh. dr bujar barwa yeah yeah sir unmute kijiye Uh, am i audible yes yes sir, uh, sir i think we we should sincerely think about two three things in in bullet form i would tell you we need to take some very quick decisions in agriculture and like sector so we need a group of ministers committee in each state agriculture veterinary fishery power pwd Um, could be forest. These four or five ministers, a group of ministers, should be formed so that immediate discussion can be taken, decisions can be taken. So, secondly, what do we need in our 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 region? No farmers' commission type of thing has ever you know seen the plight of the farmer or assessed the plight of the farmer. If a farmers' commission, at least for with two years duration, each northeastern state must set up. to have the farmers thing uh, then then uh, what what i feel i had yesterday suggested in animal science feed and fodder is a problem so therefore one feed and fodder security mission for northeastern region in the line of national health security mission or food security mission a human food security mission in that line animal fodder security mission has to be there i think initially and then of course rest of the things will follow thank you sir thank you dr sir professor premjit singh vice chancellor ca would you like to say anything uh, on this sir uh, regarding this query because there are two things one is the formal education which we are giving in the university agriculture universities in the country teaching research and extension education and as dr asis uh, mr asis has already that is clarified if the students they like to higher studies for example then after graduation post graduation even phd post doc then there is a clear what to say letter for them and uh, the there are some students also just after bsc agriculture graduation if they like to expose if they like to do their own business agri startup then entrepreneurs so there should be some provision it was rightly pointed out there but then actually the our central agriculture university we started that what to say what to say vocational courses not only the formal education we established six vocational training centers in six states of the northeastern region and we had already recruited faculty members for that vocational training courses and uh, under corporate social responsibility up till now we have already trained 450 unemployed youth of the northeastern region in identified areas either it may be bee keeping either it may be mushroom cultivation piggery poultry all those things then fishery is the aquaculture then now under nahe project we are also sending our students about 97 students to foreign countries to exposed in innovative entrepreneurship program so now we have just started the vision of the our central agriculture university instead of this three months we can convert to one year so after completion of graduation or post graduation if they like to involve what to say expertise themselves for example organic farming then post graduate diploma course in organic farming then post graduate program one year program on what to say integrated farming system so now we have just started and as mr asis has rightly pointed out because the options should be given to the students thank you sir thank you very much professor singh any other remarks questions opinions from the audience or the distinguished speakers any other remarks sir dr sir, if yeah. i am allowed i would like to i mean respond to asis one one part i mean probably that has not been answered yeah please yeah 
Sir, he has been talking about, I mean, the util utilization of these students for different uh, area. So what I personally feel, probably in my opinion, we need to little bit reorient our course uh, curriculum now in the undergraduate level itself. In the third year, second semester, what I personally feel based on the interest, student can be grouped into three divisions. One who are really interested for self-employment and entrepreneurship development, the another group may be for who are looking for the company jobs, second group. The third group may be who may be interested for research and education. If we distinctly divide our student into three groups in third year, second semester or fourth year, first semester, and rest of these three or four, two or three semester, they should be oriented in that particular direction. If we go in that way, probably many of the unanswered uh, query of the students can easily be resolved. This is my, uh, I mean, answer uh, for the query of the Ashish. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Ashish, this is what we have been trying to do. Uh, as you said, sensitize the students at the high school level, at the intermediate level, about you know, how good, in fact, many people have asked me, is there so much science in agriculture education? So this, you know, we require a real sensitization of the society, both parents and the wards and the students at the high school intermediate level that agriculture career is a very, very pros uh, prospective one, prosperous one and important one for the country. So your question is right. All efforts are there. Thank you very much. Any other, question, any other questions? Any other questions? Dr. Dilip, Dilip yeah. Kumar, please. I have just two points to make. Yeah, please, Dr. Dilip. First of all, uh, we should feel and we will gradually realize that this COVID-19 is a boon in disguise for agriculture sectors. We have seen that, you see, uh, well, uh, we have seen that data indicates that just to see agriculture sector, they are growing at a higher level, um, the rate of uh, growth. The second thing, the practical problem in the villages, Manrega was the program that really destroyed agriculture. It has provided livelihood support. It has given livelihood support to the landless people. But at the same time, in many states, it has really negatively impacted agriculture. Now, when the, these laborers are back, now you will see the result. Agriculture just will grow in that, that state. One thing. Second thing, some of those people, those educated youths, they went there, even MBA, and they're working for 10,000 rupees in mall and other places after getting an MBA degree also. So those people have also come back. And those people are exposed. Um, they have access also. And many of them, they are seriously thinking of taking up so something, uh, say, certain level of enterprise that is agriculture related because they have a base back there. So this is going to happen. But for that, at this stage, it is required that intersectoral coordination and Dr. Bajar Burgos has rightly suggested that we should have an intersectoral intersectoral coordination committee at the top level, but the minister is not going to solve this problem. This should be something the secretary heads where uh, where the vice chancellor of M vice chancellor of uh, agriculture universities should also be member of that one. So many practical they, they can they can monitor maybe six months or three months, what is the progress and what are the problems and then how just we can address these problems. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Sir. Thank you very much for this. Any other comments, remarks, opinions, suggestions? Any other sir, things? Sir, I see one hand raised, one sir. Hand. Yeah, please, Dave please. Picture. Yeah, please. Hello, please. Sir, one minute, we are allowing her. Yeah. Dev Jyoti Chakravarti. Yeah, please identify yourself and uh, what is the question? To whom is the question, please? Mr. Dev Jyoti. I think uh, he or she is not there, it looks now. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. So, colleagues, uh, in that case, it's my turn to thank everybody, the Honorable Member of Parliament, Dr. Ranjan. For, for being with us as Chief Guest, Honorable Chief Guest. Sir, thank you very much. Grateful to Professor Premjit Singh, 
the esteemed vice chancellor of the cau and dr rk saha the director of exchange education who coordinated who gave all of us a platform to be together and uh, ex ex extremely grateful immense thanks to very senior colleagues dr k m bujal barua dr dilip kumar dr k k satpati our colleague dr k k tripathi dr b c dekha and then uh, dr r k saha for being panelists and uh, our young uh, colleague from aasa uh, mr ashish kandelwal he is doing a, a great job a great job really you know conducting these webinars so efficiently so to all of you a big thanks and to our reporter dr evd shastri dr himadi saha dr sm haldar to each one of you and to all our audience uh, thank you very much we hope that today as dr bujalbar was said it has been a webinar with a difference now a few a few points have come up as strategy points what he mentioned leasing out land or many other things i have noted about 40 points 40 plus points and uh, many of them will fit into our strategy and then uh, on a short term and long term policy so to each one of you grateful and once again thanks to cau and asa for this opportunity our prayer is salutations to the farmer who has fed us whether it's covid or uh, whatever he is feeding us he and she to the farmers of this country a big salute and uh, to everybody associated with food production we would like to say that we are we are all the time today sunday afternoon all of you have come and joined gave so much time more than 3 hours to each one of you thank you very much thank, thank you very much sir. thank you thank you now i request sir uh, tapas pol to give the formal vote of thanks uh, also sir you have given but i request to tapas also thank you thank you thank you sir sir good afternoon respected chief guest dr r k ranjan singh sir honorable member of lok sabha manipur honorable chancellor of cau dr s ayappan sir honorable vice chancellor of cau dr m pranjit singh sir respected panelists of this session uh, renowned experts and all the distinguished delegates it's me it's my privilege to propose formal vote of thanks of this today's national webinar on strategies and policy interventions for agricultural development in northeast india during covid 19 era which is organized jointly by central agriculture university imphal and all india agricultural student association new delhi so at the outset i express my thankfulness to chief guest of plenary session dr r k ranjan singh sir for his presence and thought provoking address highlighting the different new schemes pertaining to agri and allied sector in northeast india i would like to express my sincere gratitude to honorable chancellor and chief patron of this webinar dr s ayappan sir for being with us on this occasion sir your presence is a inspiration for all of us thank you sir for sharing your words of wisdom which will guide us in future my sincere appreciation to honorable vice chancellor and patron professor ranjit singh sir, for entrusting us in giving such a responsibility and guiding us to organize this event successfully sir your thoughtfulness and generosity has always encouraged us to conduct this webinar i keep on record my indebtedness to chairperson of this webinar professor rk shah sir for his timely tireless effort and supervision throughout this webinar i express my gratefulness to chairpersons dr s basan singh sir professor k mamocha singh sir and professor indira saragantham ma'am for being with us and helping us in best possible way to organize this webinar my heartfelt thanks to convener of webinar professor ebd shastri sir for coordinating the session and compiling the recommendations and all the points in this session in such a short really? period of time i bow my head in gratitude yeah. to respected chairperson and keynote speakers of different sessions who have blessed us with their presence and enlightened us with new dimensions on of agri and allied research in northeast india we are also fortunate to have 25 eminent speakers and panelists in four sessions i on behalf of all the participants express the sincere gratitude to all the speakers for their insightful presentation and enriching us with new research opportunities in agri and allied sectors in in general for country and northeast in particular i take this opportunity to thank our national organizing secretary mr ashish kandrawal sir and local organizing secretary dr sm haldar sir for their sincere and untiring efforts to conduct this webinar special thanks to the advisory committee of this webinar all the program coordinators reporters for their kind help and support we have received more than 500 registration of participants from northeast and all other parts of country so uh, many of them have joined us through zoom and, and others rest of them have are in live in facebook 
So I, on behalf of Central Agriculture University and All India Agricultural Student Association, thank all of the participants for their active participation. Lastly, thanks to all those people who are directly and indirectly associated with this webinar and contributed to conduct it successfully. Thank you once again. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you.